Hello and welcome to today's lesson, Neural Network Signaling. Today we're going to be talking about how neurons, the primary component of the nervous system, communicate with each other using electricity. Before we talk about neuronal communication, let's take a moment to iron out some important details regarding electricity. First and foremost, it's important to know that electricity always travels in one direction, from positive to negative. Electrical signals in neurons, which are known as action potentials, travel very quickly, approximately 100 miles per hour. The last important point to note is that the flow of electricity is only possible in the presence of charged atoms known as ions. As a matter of fact, this is why electricity in living cells depend on salts, which produce ions when dissolved. Our dependence on dissolved salts is also the reason that sports drinks make sure to include electrolytes, which help replace the salts that we lose from sweating. Let's see if we can apply what we learned to a simple circuit activity. Take this circuit for example. When we flip the switch, the electricity flows from the positive terminal of the battery, illuminates the light bulb, and passes on to the negative terminal of the battery. Now imagine what would happen if we replaced part of the wire with a tank filled either with distilled water, which is water that has had all its ions removed, or a sports drink that contains electrolytes. What would we expect to see when the switch is flipped? If you guessed that only the light bulb in the sports drink circuit would turn on, then you're right. The electrolytes in the Gatorade provide the necessary ions for electricity to travel through the tank and onto the rest of the circuit. Now that we've covered all the essentials of electricity, we can move on to how neurons use it to communicate with each other. The first thing to know is that the neurons send electrical signals to each other using a specialized output fiber known as an axon and receive messages at the branchy structures of their cell body known as dendrites. These electrical signals, also called action potentials, actually occur many, many times at different points along the axon each one triggering the next in a manner that resembles dominoes until the end of the axon is reached. Once the action potential reaches the end of the axon, the message is transmitted to the dendrites of the neighboring cell through one of two ways. An electrical signal can pass across points of direct contact known as gap junctions, or more commonly, the action potential triggers the release of chemical signals known as neurotransmitters from the axons to the dendrites. The gap across which neurotransmitters are released are known as chemical synapses. So let's take a look at how we sense and respond to stimuli. A stimulus is simply a word for sensory input, and this can include things like light, touch, heat, etc. For example, let's say um, someone hits their knee. So then you have sensory receptors that pick up the signal and transfer it along the dendrite and axon to the subsequent neuron. At the end of the sensory neurons, they transmit the signal to motor neurons, and sometimes an interneuron can help um, relay this message between the sensory and motor neuron. But um, how does this neural signal in the motor neuron actually generate a physical response? To understand, let's take a look at what specifically happens at the neuromuscular junction, which is the location where motor neurons actually deliver the signal to muscle tissue. At this junction, Depolarization in the motor neuron, as discussed earlier, triggers the release of a neurotransmitter known as acetylcholine. When this neurotransmitter enters the muscle, it causes release of calcium, which then downstream leads to contraction of the muscle. This quick signaling pathway just going to your spinal cord and back is the reason why we flinch instantly after something like the doctor tapping our knee.